I was working uh, at the University of Complutense until a month ago, uh, where a position at the University of, of Murcia, uh, you have it uh, here on the left, uh, uh, open tab. And since I'm from Murcia, I decided to go back to, to Murcia. So right now I'm working full time at the University of Murcia. So first of all, thank you, Metka, for moderating the, the panel. And also thank you, uh, I want to thank uh, all the, the organizers of this conference during these difficult times. They're doing a great job and I'm really thankful uh, for how well the conference uh, is working so far. So uh, the title of my, uh, of my presentation is The Myth of the American Frontier in Video Games from the American West to Outer Space. Uh, this research is partly founded by my uh, research project called, uh, called uh, Temporalidades Queer, but also by a postdoctoral uh, Fulbright uh, scholarship, which unfortunately was, uh, was uh, cut short because of the pandemic. I was in the US, then the entire situation started and I had to, had to, I had to come back uh, earlier than expected. So today I will be speaking about the American frontier as one of the main myths uh, that generates uh, uh, discourses around uh, normative identities in the United States. Uh, this myth uh, has found in the Western, and when I say in the Western, I uh, say, of course, uh, uh, cinema, but also video games, and has found uh, more recently in science fiction, and again, I mean uh, uh, TV series, uh, films, but also uh, video games. Uh, here you have two examples that I will uh, later expand. Uh, a way of keeping itself uh, alive and in some contexts, in many contexts, uh, relevant. If we were to, descri to describe this myth, uh, the American frontier, we will probably uh, uh, be basing uh, our ideas on the work uh, by Frederick Jackson Turner's. Uh, uh, and they can be summarized uh, in three main ideas. Uh, the, main, the main idea, or the first, sorry, the first idea uh, would be the, that the American identity was defined by the contact of the first colonizers from Europe uh, with the savage and uncivilized space. Please note my uh, quotation marks here, okay? According to, to this vision, the frontier is uh, necessarily a liminal space. A liminal space means uh, a, space that, a space that exists between two other uh, spaces. Uh, on the one hand, we, we find uh, a space the frontier that is found outside cities and fully civilized places, uh, which are in turn uh, subjected to corruption. Uh, cities, towns, uh, civilization in general brings corruption uh, with it. But at the same time, it's also a part or is set apart uh, fully savage uh, spaces. Uh, so it exists uh, between the two. As a liminal space, as something that exists between uh, civilization and nature, it is doomed and, and was doomed, doomed to disappear. And it can only exist as a myth. Uh, it is doomed or it was doomed uh, to disappear because as civilization ex expands itself, uh, the, um, uh, the amount of natural space available and the amount of frontier space available uh, gets smaller. Uh, there is less and less and less space uh, to be conquered. And it is a myth because uh, it, needs uh, nostalgia to really work and to really appeal to the general uh, consumer and to the general uh, public, if you allow me to use uh, that term. Also, uh, the, the frontier anointed uh, the US as a bringer of civilization, and not only uh, within the US, but also, also outside uh, its own border. Uh, if we were to consider these three characteristic, uh, characteristics and then add, uh, Roosevelt ideas uh, in ranch life and the hunting trail, then the frontier would also be a masculine or masculinized uh, and wide space and myth where women play a very subordinate, a very secondary role and uh, where non-white identities have very little agency. I'm not saying that in, in US history, uh, non-white or women uh, uh, people uh, had uh, did not have any agency or were uh, forgotten. I'm saying that in this discourse, as part of this myth, they did, uh, okay? Uh, and in fact, as a myth, uh, the frontier as a historical reality based on, or based on facts or sustained by facts, really has very little credibility. And this little uh, credibility really comes uh, 
from the fact that it, that it silences and ignores uh, many people and many events that are non-white and that are non-masculine uh, or that are not uh, pro uh, carried out by men. Uh, so if this is really challenged and if there is little cred credibility uh, uh, to this myth, why talk about uh, the frontier? Why am I talking about the frontier right now? Uh, there are several reasons, but probably the most important one is that the frontier allows us to identify how certain actions of an entire community are justified. When I mean actions, I actually mean uh, expansion, expansionist international policies once the, the national frontier closed down. So the entire of the United States uh, space gets conquered. Uh, we don't have any savage, uh, again, uh, uh, quotation marks. Savage land. So what do we do? Okay, we uh, we look outside uh, the national uh, uh, borders. And when I say community, uh, I mean that the frontier has been used and is still used as a way of, as a way of creating a sense of we or us versus some form of they or others. Uh, so and how and why uh, does the frontier still survive? Uh, does it does it like, still uh, exist? Of course it does. And we can identify three reasons for that. Uh, the first one is that uh, the frontier allies or allied itself with the sublime to incite similar responses. When I talk about the frontier, sorry, about the sublime here, when I think about the sublime here, I refer or critics also refer to a friendlier, tamer version of the sublime. Uh, not as challenging, not as deadly, uh, some, something closer to what uh, Blaise Pascal and uh, Pierre Teilhard, sorry about the pronunciation, uh, uh, defined uh, the, 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 the sublime. Uh, and of course, not uh, in the same uh, way as Kant, which was a, a way more uh, challenging or deadlier uh, sublime. Uh, according to uh, Jan Johnson Smith, uh, the frontier as something that uh, incites the sublime in us or that uh, connects or brings uh, the sublime to us, is a remarkable opportunity for complex human beings to contemplate the, the minute and in, an immense universe around us, and then to prosper as part of that. Uh, as a myth, the frontier used techni technical advances to create responses as associated uh, with the sublime. We have, for, for instance, uh, the use of cadmium-based uh, pigments used by painters. Uh, the arrival of the train, uh, which uh, connected uh, distant uh, locations, but also served uh, as an iconic uh, symbol of the of, the, of civilization uh, in the frontier, and of course the arrival of cinema. Uh, while the frontier, or while this imagined space, uh, was still theoretically uh, being uh, discussed as 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 as, as real, and. The second characteristic is precisely that the frontier has in cinema its most uh, valuable ally, an ally that is capable of, uh, of reproduce uh, the frontier discourse uh, very well, and at the same time produce uh, specific stories and events, uh, and events that produce uh, the identities that are linked uh, with this uh, or to this uh, discourse, that, is, that are then cons consumed as history. So we are producing a form of discourse uh, that is based on a myth, that is based on a story, that then uh, is consumed as history. Uh, and I like a lot the fact that uh, in English we have the distinction between story and history. In Spanish we only have historia and uh, we have to deal with two very different uh, uh, terms or concepts, but in English we, we do have this, this thing, distinction. So uh, as time went by and changes uh, began to, to, to changes uh, began to appear in the United States and in the international uh, community in general, the relationship between the, the Western, its audience, uh, audience and the frontier myth itself evolved, uh, changed. Uh, people questioned uh, and question today, of course, the validity of this mystical past as more individuals challenge the meaning of this historical as who are as or who is as, okay? Experts and uh, experts and historians have often cite the Vietnam War, the struggles to achieve racial and gender equality, or even Watergate as the main causes of a growing disillusionment, oh, disillusionment 
and happiness, let's say, with the myth. Uh, so we will be talking about the 60s and the 70s, but other uh, critics also cite uh, war, the Second World War as the marker of this growing unhappiness or uh, criticism against uh, the frontier myth and the way it was represented in the, in the, in the Western. However, uh, the frontier has the capacity to adapt itself very well to the passing of time and to different political uh, contexts. Uh, in the case of Westerns uh, after the 60s, experts see a transition for a, more, for a more optimistic and naive portrayal of the frontier myth uh, with heroes who are aligned with the wide masculine approach of the, of the myth to have then a more pessimistic one in which the myth is not so much about heroes, but about people who do not fit or about the end of the frontier as a haven. I just said, and I'm repeating myself here on purpose, that the frontier adapts itself very well to the passing of time. And in fact, it adapts itself so well uh, that made uh, the jam and makes uh, the jam to other uh, genres. Uh, this myth, uh, in fact, found in science fiction a way to keep, to keep itself fresh. We have the famous uh, sentence or the famous term, uh, space, the final frontier. Something said by President Kennedy, but also found in Star Trek. And if you visit uh, NASA's uh, webpage, you will also find it uh, there, like uh, one of the main uh, headers in the, in the webpage. Uh, when discussing science fiction, I will focus my attention, however, not on movies or on uh, TV series, but on video games. And in fact, some minutes ago, I used two images, these two. And these uh, images were used to anticipate two different approaches to the frontier in science fiction and, of course, in video games. Uh, so let's start with the red right one, the red right, oh, the right hand uh, type. Uh, games such as Mass Effect, which is a saga, Borderlands, another saga uh, with uh, three or four games, depending on how you count, or many more if you can consider other spin-offs. No Man's Sky or The Outer Worlds are examples of the sublime taken to the infinite, to infinity of space. Here, uh, trains are motherships, sunsets and, dawn and dawns are black holes, heroes are cowboy, are not cowboys, sorry, but oftentimes are still gunslingers. Uh, these games uh, do many things that Westerns already did that were at the same time found uh, in the midst of the frontier too. Uh, so they keep an ass that revolves around the values and the community the main character represents, uh, just like the cowboy or the gunslinger. They keep the exploration of savage spaces and communities. Again, savage, uh, I haven't uh, written savage with uh, quotation marks, but please imagine that I have. Uh, that are changed forever as a result of our uh, heroic, heroic, sorry, or infamous actions. And if we were to go back to the image uh, from Mass Effect 2, one of the images that we uh, saw uh, some minutes ago, this one, okay. Uh, these are the secondary characters or the, the party members, uh, uh, the main character can recruit. Uh, then we discovered that uh, these um, myths, or that these, that these myths, or that this new way of interpreting the myth, the myth is not only, not only populated by white men. However, we have here a headshot, uh, which is very graphical maybe. Uh, uh, these frontiers still uh, create others in, universe, uh, in universes where there are still mechanisms or ways that justify our forms of violence against them. So there is still an us, there is still a them, and there's still ways to justify uh, aggression or violence against them, wherever they are. Additionally, uh, in games such as Borderlands, the frontier uh, returns by other means. Uh, which are as a wasteland that connects the future with the past. Uh, and we are moving to the second type of uh, science, fi science fiction uh, approach to the frontier. Uh, this kind of future frontier uh, looks back to the past in part uh, and is particularly present in games such as Wasteland or Fallout, both uh, sagas. Uh, here, the future does not take place in outer space, but goes back to the Earth or remains on Earth, uh, if you prefer that. In these games, the frontier is not a savage natural space where civilization never arrives. Instead, 
it is a space that was that was one colonized that was was wasn't uh, conquered uh, in the 19th century by uh, uh, European uh, migrants, but then became became truly savage after a nuclear armed or a natural disaster, a disaster that is frequently uh, and ironically uh, frequently caused uh, by the very same bringers of colonization, uh, men. Uh, in this future, the past does not only keep on living through the midst of the frontier, but also through waste and ruins too. Let's take a look at uh, Fallout 4. Uh, so here you have the prototypical uh, American diner uh, in ruins, uh, and, uh, a very, very, very decadent way of uh, revisiting uh, the, the, the 1950s. Uh, the theater here and the frontier are built on top of the remains of an imagined version of the American 1950s, which are, uh, together with the American frontier, another great way or, or inducer of the American myth in the US. In this new old myth, the others or others can be, and this is partially related to what we said about monsters and, and, uh, and, and even robots uh, earlier. Uh, the other can be, or the others can be, uh, monsters that are the product of radiation of our own actions, or about people who are like us and their actions. People who can agree or disagree with, uh, we can agree or disagree with, depending on, on our decisions, or sometimes entire communities that can disappear or prosper as a as a result of our actions. Uh, well, for us. The frontier is still a way of transforming our stories into, into history, of transforming a myth, a discourse into history, into a way of justifying an entire uh, identity. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so very much. This was a very um, interesting approach, um, and um, you brought in science fiction in a nice way, and uh, uh, it reminded me of something that I have in my larger paper for Thursday, um, speaking of outer frontiers, the space as the, the ultimate frontier. You know that since 45, um, the Pentagon has a special task force for the exploration of the, the galaxies, the outer spaces, and in anticipation of possible attacks from foreign yeah. uh, extraterrestrial forces. Yeah, Kennedy himself said the frontier, the final space. So it was a form of acknowledging, of recognizing uh, uh, space as this infinite uh, frontier or this infinite new frontier that might threaten us uh, in some ways, but at the same time uh, can uh, reward us if we conquer it, uh, conquer it in the right way. Uh, again, quotation marks. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, I'm aware of that, yeah. So basically, so, even in the initial frontier, there was already for them, maybe for the first explorers of the frontiers, there was some science fiction there already. Uh-huh. Uh, Christina Doku is asking me for, uh, well, uh, the uh, Frederick uh, Jackson Turner, Frederick, Frederick, uh, I will write it in the Frederick, uh, uh, Frederick Jackson, Jackson, uh, Jackson Turner is uh, the person who initiated uh, the myth and who is also, uh, who is usually uh, used as the, as the starter, as the creator of this discourse. Okay, you answered that question. Do we have yeah. any other questions from the audience or from the colleagues on the panel? Um, do, uh, do you hear me? Because I, yeah, yeah, I tried to chat, but it's I, I, I do, I do. too much time. <laughs> it's, 
thank you, uh, Juan Francisco. It was very interesting. I, I really don't uh, know nothing about what you about your corpus, about what you investigate. But it's really uh -huh. interesting. I, I what I remember that I studied, but it was about uh, I think twenty years ago, the polysystem theory of even Zohar. Do you know uh, about this theory? Because when I when you spoke about the frontier and the the, the fact that the these frontiers are always evolving, that there is a recentering, uh, changes in the margins and so, so the, the, the concept of frontier and the evolving and, and recentering, that is something theorized by, by even Zohar. So I can put it on the, yeah. on the chat. Uh, maybe it can help you to, to put the, the a more maybe I don't know a theoretical uh, definition of, of of these uh, fluctuations, but it's not a political approach. It's really just a theoretical, linguistic, uh, political approach of frontier. But, uh, but no, I'm not. I, I'm not familiar with uh, with with uh, the, the the theory you're mentioning. So if you can send it uh, to me through a chat, I will appreciate it, and I will check it out uh, later. Uh, so it's the polysystem uh, th theory um, oh, yeah. of even Zohar, who was a professor at Tel Aviv, and mm -hmm. he, he was he was famous uh, about uh, some I don't know twenty years ago. He was really famous because of his theories, also for traductions, but not only for traductions, also for cultural interferences. And in the center of his theory was this question of how um, a center evolve into a margin, how, how, are, how the frontier evolves. So that, maybe that can interest you. Okay, you... okay, I, I, I'll definitely <laughs> check, it, uh, check it out. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm not familiar with, with it and I will check it out. Uh, yeah. uh, Rain has suggested uh, another uh, book. I am familiar with that book. I just haven't implemented it or it's not part of my presentation because I, want, I just wanted to show a doublet of my research. Uh, uh, that's also why I have kept uh, uh, citations and authors uh, to a minimum because I wanted to treat it to treat this as a way of introducing uh, of introducing sorry introducing uh, uh, listeners to these contexts. I I know that many of my listeners are frequently not not uh, familiar with video games at least. So I, I, I want to, to give a, uh, or to offer a very general approach and overview. So, but yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. 